So I've been having a problem recently, the suspension fault. I keep getting the error message come up here and the amber warning light. And a few times it's actually gone red as well and told me to restrict it to 30 miles an hour. It's a real intermittent fault. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Sometimes I can do a whole journey and it won't come on. Sometimes it will happen as soon as I start the car up. Sometimes it will just stay on amber and sometimes it will go red. So I want to have a look today and see if I can find out exactly what's going on. So let's start the engine and see if it's actually coming on today. So today we've got fuel level low, which is fine. And in actual fact, there we go, we can see that we've got the amber warning kind of triangle light on and it is actually coming up suspension full. So if I use the buttons on the steering wheel, we can just go in, show warnings, okay. We've got fuel level low, okay, and then suspension full. So I know what everyone's saying, get it plugged in and get the codes read. So I've done exactly that already. So let's have a look what the codes come up. So from that code, we know that the fault is with the exhaust valve on the compressor. So the other thing I wanted to do as well was just check all the corners, make sure that all the voltages are fine and all the height sensors and everything like that. My car doesn't drop overnight at the front or the back, so I'm pretty happy that um, the other components are all good. So let's just take a quick look and I can show you that the voltages at all four corners are good as well. So at the minute with the fault as it is, I can still drive the car. It happily goes along, you know, there's no issues with it whatsoever. I just can't use the suspension to go up or down. But to get to the compressor, it's down here, just in front of the back wheel, behind underneath the side steps. So ideally what we could do is jack the car up, get more access so that we can under, get underneath it a bit easier. But I know that when I've jacked the car up before, once it's then dropped down, the car's actually dropped all the way down to the bump stops. And without the compressor working, that means I'm not gonna be able to get the car back up. So I don't wanna jack the car up today. So unfortunately, I don't have any ramps to put it up on. But what I am gonna do is just put it up onto a couple of bricks. It's only gonna give me a couple of inches, but according to the missus, that makes all the difference. Okay, great, there we go. So the car's now up on the bricks. All I did was just put my chocks there, just to give it a little ramp up, and then straight up onto the bricks, no issues whatsoever. So we've now got an extra couple of inches just to get underneath the car. So then coming underneath the car, some people like to take the back wheel off to do this. I don't think it's particularly necessary. But then coming underneath, what we can see, basically this whole piece here, this whole bit of panel in, plastic panel, is the cover for the compressor. So what we're gonna need to do is take that off. We've got three fixings for that, as far as I know. So the first one is there. Looks like the second one is actually underneath. And then from what I understand, the third one, is gonna be up behind here somewhere. I'll have a look. There we go. I think that's it there. So I'll get some tools out and get this cover off. So this first one at the front here seems to be a number 10 socket. So as far as I know, it's the first time it's come off in the eight years that the car is. So fingers crossed they'll all come off all right. Not like the ones on the side steps, if you've seen that video. But it feels like it's coming off okay. Okay, there we go. So that's the first one out nice and easily. Okay, great. There we go. What I've just noticed from where I actually am, I'm not sure whether you can see it on the camera or not, there's actually, looks to be, a bit of moisture just on this hose coming out here. So, the fact that there's moisture coming out could mean that it's just a bit of condensation, it's just a bit wet, but it could be, what I suspect, that the desiccant uh, stuff, or if you want to call it the beads, desiccant beads, inside the compressor itself, I've got completely waterlogged and need replacing. That's what I'm hoping it might be, and I can just get a new kit for it. But let's get this cover off now, and we can have a look closer. Okay, so you might be able to see as well that we've actually got, if I bring that in, a couple of clips here. It's just some plastic clips. So this one's obviously the most obvious, it's right in the front. So I think they just clip forward, come forward. And I'm guessing there's gonna be, yeah, there's another one just under here. I think there's another one at the front here. So I'll just run around.
Okay, great. So I think there was one, two, three, four. I'm not sure if there's a fifth one at the back. Yeah, there is. If I can work that from where I am. There we go. That's our cover away. So now let's have a look at what we've got. Okay, so apart from needing to replace the desiccant beads, the other fault I was hoping it was gonna be was an electrical fault. And straight in front of us, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, right here, if I bring the camera in a bit closer, you might be able to see that that cable has been rubbed on and has basically worn through. So I'm not sure whether or not that might have been grounding out. Well, it wouldn't have been grounding out in the plastic cover but whether or not it had anything, any impact to that. So we'll definitely need to sort that out. So I'll just have a quick look over the rest of the cable in here and see if I can find anything else that's as obvious as that. Okay, so looking around the compressor area, I couldn't see anything else particularly obvious. It was just that one cable that was shorting out. Looking at the cover, we can see, let's get rid of that other light, there we go. We can see where it was touching. We just kind of got that little blue bit there, that blueness there, you can see obviously where that corrosion from that cable's been rubbing. Okay, so I thought I'd just have a look at this a bit closer. And on closer inspection, what it looks like, whether or not you can see it there, I'm not sure if it's in focus, but it looks like the cable's actually corroded the whole way through. And as it was an intermittent fault, and it kind of got worse and worse over time, it would suggest that it's slowly worn away. Looking at it, just getting a screwdriver in there, just giving it a little prod, it doesn't actually seem to be that much actual metal of the cable in there at all whatsoever. So I'm gonna have a little closer inspection, see if I can find anything that is there, because <laughs> it doesn't look like there's much there at all. And uh, if it is that, then that's gonna be great, because that's gonna be a lovely easy fix. Okay, well, without doing much at all, I think you can see that there's obviously nothing there connecting this end of the cable to this end of the cable. So on the assumption that I can get enough just on this little leg here, what I'm gonna do is just cut through that, get a bit of heat shrink on this, get back on here, get this soldered on, and yeah, hopefully that will be our fix. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, just to get a bit more kind of length on this so I can work on it not so close to the car, is just remove this plug. So I think there's a clip just here. If I just push that over my thumb, then the thing should pull away. There we go, nicely. So now I've got a bit more slack, all right, still underneath the car, but hopefully that'll allow me to get to that a bit easier just to resolder that back on. Okay, just while I'm prepping this for soldering as well, I was just reading this label, obviously it's got some information on there about the compressor. So we've got AMK, so we know it's the AMK compressor. We've got the date on there, 28th of the 10th, 2014 as well. So this is when it was manufactured. And then part numbers and times and stuff like that. So, useful bit of information. What I think I'm gonna do, because I've had to strip this back quite away, is probably cut this label off, cut this sheathing back a little bit further, just so that I can get the heat shrink on there a little bit further so that when it comes down, it's gonna cover the whole thing. Okay, so having done that, what I've actually found is that this shroud is heat shrink itself. So this was just on the inside of the heat shrink. So um, what I might be able to do is feel where it comes up into the compressor further up. It feels like it's, well, you can see it's actually gonna move now. So I may be fortunate, but what I'm gonna do is just put some heat shrink on this bit anyway, and just bring that down and actually shrink it over the top of it. Okay, well there we go. We can see we've not got too much to work with. A bit from the plug, that's about it. I've just got a few mil, but it should be enough to get that resolder back onto. So there's actually a bit of slack just in that loom that's gonna make that come down. So uh, let's get some flux on there, get the solder hot, and uh, let's see if we can get this on there. You can see I've got the heat shrink at the top here, pushed on, all ready to go. So we should just be able to bring that down afterwards. And fingers crossed, this, what could have been a thousand pound job, is actually just gonna be a 2 p job. Okay, brilliant. So we've just about got that soldered back on. It's not the nicest job, but it's much better. Problems that I've had using a gas soldering iron outside in the cold on a wet and windy day. It's taken forever to get up to temperature, um, which was a big problem, but we're just about there now. So I'm gonna get the heat shrink down over the top of it. Uh, and then we'll get it plugged on. Maybe I'll get it plugged on before I hit his back down and see if we can just turn the ignition on and uh, yeah, see if that's clear our fault. But there we go, heat shrink down over the top. We'll just give that a little wave over the top. We'll get it plugged back on and get the ignition on. OK, 
Okay, great. So back in the car, foot on the brake, press the button. Okay, so we've got fuel level low. That looks good. So we can see that obviously we've only got 12 miles. <laughs> I can't afford any fuel at the minute. I keep having to fix cars. But um, it looks like that soldering job has got rid of it. So what I think we'll do is get it all back together, get it back down on the ramps and take it for a quick test drive. Okay, so back under here, what I think I'm gonna try and do, or what I have done, if you can see there, the heat shrink that kind of come from the actual plug itself. I've managed to slide that up a little bit, so it's not gonna to rub too much on the insulation of the cover when we put the cover back on. But I'll just see if I can tuck it up a little bit. But I'm gonna get the cover back on now. Okay, great, there we go. So that's all back together. We've got that bolt in there, the other one underneath, and the other one at the back side. It's all back together, all the clips went on nicely as well. So I guess what we can do now is get the car turned on. And while it's still up on the brakes, what I think we'll do is just actually try and raise the suspension, lower and bring it back up again. Okay, so back in the car, we'll start the engine again. Make sure the door's shut properly. There we go. Fuel level low warning, which we know about, which is great. No other fault. So I'm guessing what we'll do, in actual fact, we'll just put it on here. Have a look at our four by four info. You can see that everything's normal, no issues whatsoever. So if I just now hit the suspension up button, so it's raising, you can see it's going up. I can feel the car going up, I can see it going up. No issues at the minute. It's taken a little while, but it does. And there we go. We are now off-road height, which is fantastic. So we can see that as well. Obviously we've got our little symbol on the dash. So now if we go down again, if I can see through the camera, it says lowering, going down. Feel the car going down, there we go. Normal height. If we go down again into access mode, you can feel it going down. And there we go, now we're at access height, brilliant. So what I think we'll do, we'll just go back up again it going straight up straight away nice and quick this time and there we go normal mode so we'll leave it there i'll take it forward and let's just go on an actual fact what we'll do we'll just go back slightly there we go we'll come down off of the bump stops there we go right let's move them bricks out of the way and take it for a test drive Fantastic, so epic test run, no problems whatsoever, or a little test drive, should we say, test run. No faults, I even took the liberty of going to the petrol station to get some fuel as well, so now we've even got that warning light off. So we've got no warning lights on, no anything, so there we go. Okay, so there we go. So if you've got that compressor exhaust valve fault coming up on the part code, or on the, uh, on the fault codes rather, don't worry about having to spend a grand perhaps for a new compressor because it may well not be that, and you can do it for a 20p fix just like I have done. If you found that useful, hopefully many people in the community have. If you have, if you've just enjoyed the video, please do give us a like down below. If you are able to as well, please take advantage of the super thanks down below. Just a small donation, anything that will go towards helping me, making sure that I can keep putting these videos out for you. If you haven't done so already, remember to hit subscribe coming up here now. Like I always say, it's the easiest way to find your way back to the channel. Loads of videos on, on here for this car, for that car, for uh, other cars as well. But for thanks for now for watching the video. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. So yeah, remember to hit subscribe, come up here now, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Cheers, bye-bye.